Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to another edition of The Alleged Killing of Twins and Mary Celeste Hawks, Part 2. And this very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that this video is not intended to offend anyone. It is not a propaganda video. It is made in good faith for educational and reference purposes only. Please look for the materials referenced and study them yourself. Remember, those who have no record of what their forebears have accomplished lose the inspiration which comes from the teaching of biography and history, Tata G. Woodson. And from Thomas R. R. Cobb, the Negro among the Jews, as everywhere he is found, was of a proscribed race. He was even forbidden to approach the altar to offer the bread of his God. And this was from the book, An Inquiry into the Law of Negro Slavery in the United States of America and published 1858. The Alleged Killing of Twins From our last edition of this series, we saw that a Jima in Igbo land, or Igbo language so called, because all the slaves exported from the Bight of Biafra and Benin were classified and referred to as Igbos. And please bear in mind that all the identities, all the appellations you hear in southern Nigeria were all created or concocted by the slave masters. And that's why if you looked at the names, be it the states, even the local governments, for example, most of their names have no meanings in the languages of the area. For example, ask anyone from Imo State what Imo State means. It has no meaning. Ask anyone from Abia State what Abia State means. It has no meaning. Ask anyone from Rivers. What does that mean? Now you're from the waters or what? Cross River. What does that mean? Aquaibom. What does that mean? They can tell you it's Big River, but that's a lie because nobody was known by that name when the slave masters came before they concocted this one. Again, you can check Anambra, it has no meaning in that language as well. You check Delta, the same thing. So that should help all of us understand the conquest and the alliance of the slave hunters of old and how they connive today to subjugate and enslave the Negroes. And so we note that things that did not exist prior to the coming of the Europeans did not have any local names. For example, the word Igbo was not even heard by the people until the slave master brought it. So when you see somebody today telling you how he is Igbo, the people called themselves by the names of their communities. They never had a collective name for their whole entire ethnicity or their tribe or their race because they were not interacting with the external world to that level at that time. This is subject of a different video. Our interest is to show you that the story of how the Negroes were killing their twins and they took a Scottish lady called Mary Celeste to get them to stop is a very big lie. And so we saw that Chuku, Chuku or Chuku Okike, the supreme creative force or the creator of heaven and earth existed before the coming of the Europeans because the people knew the creator before the Europeans and Arabs came with the golden calves of Islam and Christianity. And we also saw that Chi or Chi was the creative force, personalized. So those things existed because they were there. The slave master did not bring them. And then this brings us to the question, were Negroes killing the twins before the Europeans and Arab slave hunters came? Or they started after the Europeans and Arab slave hunters arrived? That's our little question to you. If you know the answer, please put it in the comment section. And another question is, who was responsible for the killing? Was it the mother of the twins? Was it their father? Was it the priest? Was it somebody in the community? Whose duty was it at that time? Remember, these narratives were concocted by the slave masters in their claim that the Negroes were not humans. They were animals. They lived on trees, they ate and killed their babies, they sacrificed every human and all that. 
So the question becomes, whose duty was it if a woman has a twin? Now, for example, let's say if you listening to this as a woman had twins, whose duty was it to come and kill the children? That's our question to you. And so permit us to ask you, are you a black or Negro woman? Are you from any of the groups that the slave masters and their slave hunting partners claim killed their twins? Do you have twins or know any twins? Do you tell your twins or other children that your grandmother or great-grandmother or your forebears were killing their twins and that if not for the coming of one European lady in her 20s, you would have also killed them? Remember, when you're telling your children that your people killed twins before the Europeans came, if they happen to be twins, what you are indirectly telling them is that if not that that woman came when she came, allegedly though, I would have also killed you or they would have killed you. Whoever you mean by they is a different story. Did you also know that the same way you believed the alleged killing of twins is the same way you believe something like the Nigerian army or Cameroonian army is protecting you? Remember, somehow an adult believes that something like the Nigerian army is protecting him or her the question becomes how can you believe such a thing and so when they post that someone in the nigerian army has been killed before you type rest in peace do you remember he or she must have killed many before his or her eventual death do you remember that or for some reason you believe that those he or she killed deserved to die why he deserves to live and sometimes when you see them, especially northerners, especially the Fulanese, post something like, pray for our troops. Do you remember you are being asked to pray for your friend, neighbors and other humans to be made orphans on widows or widowers or ideally for someone you know, some other human being to be killed? Because that's the only thing the army does. The army was a slave hunting militia. It was only repackaged. He does not offer anybody anything good so that's why you see they go out and kill other human beings and they violate the original principle of live and let live among the negro races if you doubt what we're saying ask anyone in a typical negro society if you were to shed blood if you killed somebody inadvertently or in error you were supposed to perform some cleansing before you can associate and relate and eat with your community again but then those things were somehow watered down by the slave masters and their slave hunting partners so you see somebody in the army he goes and after killing people he will come and eat with you you forget that he has shed blood there is blood in his hands and so do you actually remember that those he or she killed were people's children people's brothers people's husbands people's wives or just fellow humans so while those people were crying you were praying for him to succeed in killing them have you spent time to ask yourself why there is always war in black africa whereas the europeans that make the guns and bullets do not have wars in their place and do you also actually realize that the same army you are praying for where the slave hunters of old used to capture and export your forebears if you are a negro as beasts akin to cattle do you realize that or if you think the army could have been anything similar to what you were made to believe why not ask yourself why there are this army in cameroon and another one in nigeria protecting the boundaries drawn by europeans and guns made by Europeans so ideally your duty if you are in the army is to be the fool paid like 50,000 naira a month and your duty is to sustain the divide your duty is to kill your siblings in defense of a foreigner's interest and so we ask you still what makes you believe that those who murdered and treated your forebears as beasts could now be protecting you protecting you from who or what if we asked remember during the lockdown for example the military killed more people than the so-called virus remember at that time we asked you 
what made you believe that those who were killing people for asking for freedom, asking for food, will not be so much in love with them that they want them to stay home so that the virus doesn't kill them? Think about it. The army was killing people for asking for freedom, for wanting out of a union like Nigeria or Cameroon, in Biafra or Ambazonia. Now, the same army is now killing the same people to force them to stay home because a virus will kill them. Think about it. Does that make sense to you? The reason the slave master is able to use the army is because they conditioned them the same way they did when they used them as slave hunters. That's why you see somebody that's supposedly young, a young man, will go and kill another young black man for asking for freedom he didn't shoot anybody he didn't kill anybody he just said i want things done this way and the fool in the army will take a gun and go and shoot him ask yourself the person that is shooting his brother can that person be anything less than a fool that's our question to you and so on a side note the enemy within do you remember the case of ejele speaks the refugee in turkey that we told you that some of our viewers like Best Les Kajugema and Mr. himself alone were supporting because he was actually working with the slave hunters of old. Do you remember when we told you that the Fulani and British slave hunting partners were bringing him home to use him against the freedom struggle of Biafra? Do you also remember he claimed IPOB wrote a petition against him and all that but we told you it was a lie because such things do not work abroad. And so, have you noticed that he came home clearly to help the Fulani government of Nigeria, FGN, against his own people? Remember we mentioned that to you because of the confidence with which he was even making videos in the police and if you have ever lived abroad. There is no way you can be without papers and the police or immigration officer arrests you and you will have all the time and luxury to make videos from the police station threatening how many lawyers you've got and how you are going to be home to deal with some people. Remember, this person had no job, he had no family, he had no stable home, so he was up for grabs and the slave master understands the Esau and Jacob's porridge and birthright gold where they know that the moment you are hungry you could be made to sell your birthright for a portion of stew and so have you then taken time before following him and listening to the lies he is peddling against the freedom movement of IPOB or anyone else including Ambazonia why is he doing what he's doing you were following him because you claimed IPOB were after him we are oppressing him, we are fighting him. The same way we told you about the army, before you pray for the army to succeed in killing people because the army just kills innocent people. Remember, it could be not just your turn tomorrow, but the turn of your loved one. So as you celebrate him today, supporting him, helping him to kill innocent people, the same way this was how the slave trade happened. If some people gathered to rise up against the institution of the slave trade, other Negroes will fight against them, report to Massa. That is the origin of the police. That is the origin of the army. The army was to capture the slaves. The police were to safeguard the barracoons. So it was from the police, then you have things like the water. And if you notice in a place like Nigeria, they all carry guns. That's what they were. It is for the Fulani conquest, which we shall look at in a subsequent video with the British hiding behind them because of their policy of ruling through the Fulanese. And today, you see that Ijele Speaks, also known as Udele, is back and is defending the same government that made him a refugee in a foreign land. Have you wondered why? He claimed they should have gone to the local government authorities to ask them what they were doing with the monies they were given by the central government. Have you wondered why he didn't start from there? But he is now fighting IPOB, telling you how much people were paid for reporting others as members of IPOB. This was exactly how the slave trade happened. And for those who may not be Nigerians, there is a group fighting for freedom from the slave hunters of old and their partnership with the slave master. Then this person we are talking about, if you have been following our videos, was a refugee in Turkey. They went and contracted him. First, 
the BBC Ibo, which is where the saboteurs congregate, went to interview him and they arranged to bring him home. And so, before that arrangement, they made it look like he had a fight or some beef with the group asking for freedom. And so, before he left Turkey, he sent words around claiming he was being oppressed by the freedom fighters of IPOB and spread an account number for people to contribute money to him. But the question becomes, this was the same person telling people that Kano and the IPOB leadership were just making money. Now he was spreading an account number for people to contribute money to him. He didn't know that any association, any group requires money to run. He didn't know that IPOB had a radio station, had apps, had people they had to sponsor for one thing or another, had their radio stations to run. He was busy condemning the payment, accusing Kano of all sorts of crimes, being a con man and all those things. But our question to both you supporting him and himself is, why then did you spread accounts for people to contribute money to you when you claim that paying money for an association people belong to? willfully and on their own was scam was fraud they were not asking for freedom they were doing this and doing that yes it's easy to understand for those who can discern that you have been paid to do what you're doing but work with wisdom all we can tell you is this was exactly how the slave trade happened and the same way you are supporting the fulani government to be killing innocent people with the army that was how the slave hunters did it back then they claim that the people didn't call God, that that's what justifies they are being killed, hunted, captured and sold as slaves. But then when it comes to your family, we hope you will be able to take it too. See the same way you condemned people paying their dues to run the affairs of IPOB was the same way you spread account numbers for people to pay you to help you get a lawyer for a case you made up yourself working with the Fulani government of Nigeria. That's the same way as you are pointing at people to be killed today. That's how it will come to your family. Just watch and see. The slave master is a subtle beast. They are going to use you. There is nobody that they have ever used that did not appear stupid in the end. The lower Niger Congress, they said the same thing you were saying. But when they were asked, how are you financing your own group? What did they do? They spread account numbers all over the place. Have they come up again since then? The answer is no, they have disappeared. And then to our topic of today, let us reference the International Geography by 70 authors with 488 illustrations by Hoy Robert Mill, DSC, and this was published 1899. And here we see a map and then we see Lagos and the Niger Coast Protectorate. Please remember that Lagos was not part of southern Nigeria until 1907 amalgamation of Lagos with southern Nigeria. Our interest is to show you how the conquest is progressing. So here you see this map. It is the map of Niger Delta. But if you notice today, they tell you the oil is coming from Niger Delta because they have finished with Lagos side. Biafra today was what Eba used to be like. The Ebas were fighting for independence for a very long time. They were always crushed with the armies from Dahomey and all the neighboring countries. If you notice today that a lot of people are trying to pull out of the army, the Nigerian army are pulling in people from neighboring countries because all of them feed from the enslavement of the Negroes, which you don't need to believe us. We will show you the details and if you go and read, you will find out what they are doing. So in this map, it shows you that Lagos and those areas are also part of Niger Delta. And it tells us here that the principal towns of the Niger Delta are Lagos, Brass, in the eastern division of the Niger Coast Protectorate. Remember, it is a protectorate when it was a major source of slaves. So at that time, they came to say we were protecting them from slave hunters. That's ideally what that protectorate is all about. Forget the stories. The other sites where they are not as vulnerable were considered colonies, ab initio, but these ones were protectorates. And then it goes further to say, Boni, Opobo, Old Calabar. There are also the following trading stations where Europeans reside. Badagri, 
Remember, Badagri was where the slave port in the Bight of Benin was. You can Google it, Badagri slave port. And then you have Leki, Akorodu, New Benin, Fokados, Kuo Ibo, and New Calabar. No connection with Old Calabar. Please remember that all these names were concocted or created by the slave masters. The reason they want their slave hunting partners in power is that's the only people that they will steal and they keep quiet because both of them are thieves anyway. Their slave hunting partners are invaders. They are not indigenous to the area. So whatever they do, those ones can allow it. They know that the indigenous groups will not allow that. Imagine anyone that is sensible enough that you will come to kill his brother and you will agree. So because they are slave hunting partners are foreigners ideally to the land they can come and kill you they don't care because they are not siblings it doesn't matter how you see it you notice that even after the NSAS riots the SAS were supposed to be a police unit sponsored by the British and their slave hunting partners you see that while the South were crying the Northerners were happy and in support of the SAS you should ask yourself which type of sensible person on earth will be happy to see his brothers being killed but that's the problem. The slave hunters and their slave hunting partners are still working together against the victims of their man's inhumanity to man. And he goes further to say, in addition, towns of importance, either for historical association or for trade, are Epe, Abiokuta, Ebada, Odeonde, which should be Ondo, Benin, Bende, Oguta, and Aaron. That Aaron there is Aro. That's the error they accused of being behind the slave raids and slave hunts. Remember, they are done conquering the southwest. So they are coming down south. That's what you're seeing. That's the big division. You see them make conscious effort to sustain between what you call southeast and south-south today. You don't need to believe us. We just show you their trick. Then you can go study it yourself. The slave master is never smart, but he's a subtle beast. But his foot soldiers, they lack humanity, they lack common sense. So it goes further here to say, The population of these towns varies from 100,000 to 5,000 according to local circumstances, such as the goodness or badness of their rulers, the state of trade, or the influence of Europeans. Now we ask you, do they not tell you how they could have captured millions from what they called Southeast today? But you see what the populations of these towns were like back then. And so going further, now that you have seen that Lagos used to be part of Niger Delta, and you can see it even from the map. And remember when you hear the likes of the governor of River State, all those governors are slaves to the Fulani. They are part of the conquest. If you notice, now that they want to change the appellation of the so-called Igbos to Ndibo, if you listen to any of those governors, you will see that they make conscious efforts to use Ndibo because that's what they were moving to. You may not believe us, you may not even understand it, but we shall prove it to you. But then our interest further down here is where it says the Fulas, that's the Fulanese, are warriors and slave raiders. But their original occupation of peaceful herdsmen is still followed by a proportion of the people who wander throughout the country with their herds and flocks. The numerous waterways afford excellent communication in Lower Nigeria, while Upper Nigeria is intersected by regular caravan routes, which are, however, merely narrow tracks trodden down by the native carriers and beasts of burden. You see that the reason the British has a policy of ruling through the Fulani is because it is through them that they can carry out their obnoxious things, including the slave trade. Remember, it said they were previously peaceful cattle herders but the british knows how to incite them that's what you see happening you see the nsas riots for example you see how they are freezing accounts instead of doing what they promised to do instead of addressing the issues that's because they are not the same with the people think about it if you had parents or you had children and your children came crying be it for food or anything and you can afford those things and you have them will you start killing them putting them in jails no it is the slave hunters of old mainly the british the english hiding behind their slave hunting partners the fulanese that's why you see freezing accounts and all that instead of addressing the little issues they raised which is unfortunate 
But because most of the people do not know, they are running after the slave hunters and their slave hunting partners. And going further here, we see native kingdoms. The various native kingdoms are governed by their own rulers who in all cases, in return for an annual subsidy, acknowledge British sovereignty. In Lower Nigeria, this is what you call Southern Nigeria today, it used to be called Lower Nigeria. And there is nothing like Nigeria being formed or created in 1914, that's a lie. It goes further to say, in Lower Nigeria, the semi-independent chiefs are innumerable, but Upper Nigeria consists besides the minor kingdom of Bogu and such few pagan tribes as have not as yet been conquered by the fullers of the two great empires of Sokoto and Bono, capital Kuka, population 50,000, the Sokoto or Fula Empire which comprises the old Hausa states and the once independent kingdom of Gando contains 17 provinces including Adamawa, Kano, Nupe, Yoruba, in bracket, Elorin, and Lafia, the last three owing allegiance to Gando as well as to Sokoto. Remember they are bringing the conquest down south, that's what you see them doing. It includes Islamization and then what they are doing today will help us prove beyond any reasonable doubts that they were behind the slave trade and it will also help us prove that Islam and Christianity are mere golden calves. Those things are not true and there is no power in them which we will ultimately challenge anyone who follows those slave masters golden calves to come and challenge us too. And he goes further to say each of these provinces is governed by an emir who is virtually the sovereign of a small kingdom though liable to be deposed at the will of the sultan of Sokoto. So you see why it is the sultan that is behind all those killings you are seeing the Fulanese do today because that's the center of the slave trade. It was the wholesale merchant in Negro slaves. That's why he collided with the English who were his slave hunting partners to now write that it could have been the arrow. Because they work together, when a lie is told often enough, it begins to look like the truth. So that's why you are being deceived to think that it could have been the arrow. While looking at the army, you are even now praying for the same army that were the slave hunters. We have asked you and we ask you again, when the army is going to kill people, do you actually realize that they are going to kill other people like you who are defenseless and powerless? But then, going further, our interest is where it says the system of government and inspection is thoroughly organized with a complete scheme of taxation for each province, the inspecting officer being responsible that the emirs pay their annual tribute which usually consists of slaves. So they capture the slaves and that's the tribute. The Europeans now come to them to get those tributes. They have an agreement, an arrangement of when they gather the slaves. So that's why you see them united in telling you it could have been the arrow because they also understand that the Negro believes whatever he's told. You can actually be lying to a Negro on something that is totally different from what he can see and read and he will believe you. Let us also reference reports from Her Majesty's consuls on the manufactures, commerce, etc. of their consular districts, Great Britain Foreign Office and this was published 1874. And here we are told that an unlikely field for Christians to spring from must Calabar have sinned. True to life was the midshipman's report, manners they have known and their customs are beastly. Now remember they are talking of Calabar and who are these? The same people that have been capturing slaves from there for centuries. And it goes further to say, twin children were put to death and their mothers banished for life. Banished to where? We don't know, but see what they are saying. Persons suspected were doomed to eat the fatal Calabar bean and no man could sicken or die but someone was suspected of bewitching him. When a great man died, a number of his wives and slaves were butchered and buried with him that he might have people to cook his food and paddle his canoe in the next world. Remember these are all lies but they needed every justification they could concoct at that time to defend colonialism because by this time they were now coming with colonialism and they needed to justify it because a lot of 
kind or human-hearted people were against it. The same way they were against the slave trade. Human sacrifices were frequent, and hedonism rendered more cruel by three centuries of slave trading crushed the degraded and unhappy race. So you see, the same people that said we are not human, we are conducting human sacrifices. And you notice here, they mentioned that there was three centuries of slave trading. They want you to now believe that the slave trading was done by the same people. Remember, they have been depopulating the Negroes. And if you notice, some so-called Hebrew Israelites or even some black Christians or awoken people today will tell you that the whole places are black land. But they won't try to remind you that the population is shrinking because the slave master is a subtle beast. You see how he's doing it. He keeps pushing further down and their ultimate goal is to exterminate the Negro race. Remember, the same way when they wanted to stop the slave trade, the northerners, the Fulanese you are talking about today, refused. Now we ask you, if you believe you are the same with them, explain to us why somebody will ask you to build his roads or his schools or even allow him to build it and you take guns and start shooting him. Explain that to us. If you still don't get it, then you may never get it. We suggest you stop watching our videos. Let us then reference Calabar and its mission by the Reverend Hoy Goldie and this was published 1901. And here we are told that eventually it took the place of an act of obedience demanded by the objects of their idolatry and strange to say it is most strenuously supported by the women though they suffer most from it take note of this they are talking about those that had twins we didn't want to read all because the video will be too long and he goes further to say the mother who was visited with the much dreaded affliction of a twin birth was no doubt formally destroyed with her infants but we found on our arrival that though she was driven out of the town and mourned for as dead she was permitted to live in the farm districts and a hamlet was built on the outskirts of each town called the twin mother's village in which those resided who were undergoing this banishment for life now we ask you if you have ever had this before if you are from any of those regions now please remember that our forebears did not read these books they wrote them down, read it in their place, and came back to teach it as history to the children in our own place. So those who were eyewitnesses at that time were never able to read these materials themselves. And it goes further to say, twin births seem much more frequent amongst those rude tribes than among communities advanced in civilization and consequently infanticide tended much to keep down the increase of population. So they are now telling us that those who were not civilized were involved in population control more than those who were supposedly civilized. But today we see the reverse, that the so-called civilized western world are more concerned about population control than anyone else. And we see that this gives the game away a little here, because if it was being killed because of population control then it makes no sense to banish the woman anymore you see how their lies collapse the moment you read different accounts of what they were saying because they were all lies and it goes further to say a detailed account need not be given of the destruction constantly occurring around us of the hapless infants whom superstition doomed the following instances will suffice to show the feelings of the people towards such in the cruelty practiced on them. The wife of Okun Nyamsi or whatever, then teacher at Eseko, came in one day to report the circumstance of a twin bath in the neighborhood. The father of the infants had carried them into the bush and buried them. Okun and his wife got notice of the matter and he hurried out to see if anything could be done for them. The father refused at first to show the spot where he had put them, but yielding to Okun's sharp rebuke, they were taken out of the hole, still alive. So the father buried them, they came in, got him, and they went back, and he dug it up, and they were still alive. 
we want you to look at the account and apply common sense that's all you need the slave master is a liar the slave master is a subtle beast he goes further to say but neither of them lived and the poor mother would not look at them a note received from the reverend asokwa ekanem native minister at ikunetu says on wednesday morning a lad came and told us of a twin birth at a farm a native assistant and i went out immediately and saw the woman in the bush she was weeping very much and we tried to comfort her but she would not listen we asked her to go home with us but she refused nor would she receive any help she would rather die than be a twin mother you see the twin had died but then she had the baby already but now she would rather die than be a twin mother understand this they are lying you may not believe it but we shall prove it to you at least there are places where they claimed that the babies were killed another account of the same baby said that one died because he wasn't strong but at least you notice here that they have not told us who clearly was doing the killing so eventually the father of these twins went and buried them they now went and brought them out they were still alive and then they later died these are all stories they are lies which you can see when you look at them closely and he goes further to say we asked for the infants but all were afraid to tell us at last one boy on the promise of a shirt led us to a pot lying under a palm tree on turning it up we found two little girls squeezed into it we wrapped them up and brought them home and put them into a warm bath one of them died after the bath for the people had wounded it on the head and cut her hands and face and broken one of her ribs the reverend m timson writing from Ikrofyong states that on the dreaded calamity of a twin birth occurring in the household of a man who professed to be his friend the said friend had thrown both mother and twins into the river and thought it strange that he should be rebuked for so doing so an adult woman that had a baby the man will carry his wife and the babies and throw them into the river and the woman will just stay there like a little baby and drown and meanwhile remember that the rivers were the only source of drinking water at that time so there is no way you can be going throwing corpses into it above all if someone drowned in a river back then sacrifices were to be offered for cleansing and purification before people can start drinking from that river again you see what happens when people write what they do not know the reason people still believe these lies is because they were told this when they were children and they grew up believing them ask yourself how an adult grown-up woman that had a baby could have been taken to a stream most times the streams are not very far away from the house but they are not very close either and you take the baby the babies one man and the woman and go there and throw them in if you look at it it looks like the same thing they talk about slave trade where a man could have sold his wife they will tell you a son sold the father they won't tell you why the same buyer would not buy the son but buy the father but then going forward here it says mr timson had the pleasure shortly after of rescuing by force the first twin child of the bibio tribe preserved from the wanted doom now we ask you does this first twin child or children of this ibibio tribe mean the first after they came or the first that were rescued the question if you know the answer you could put in the comment section but our interest is for you to see these accounts but when they are told the way the slave master wanted them told you will think they actually happened it goes further to say the infant was a little girl who is now the wife of an assistant teacher at Ikrofyong station but for years the heads of the village where she was born insisted that she should be brought back from creek town where she had for safety been taken and killed you see how smart they play so the baby had grown to the point that one of them got married to the twin that would have been killed and then people are still asking for them to bring her so they can kill her remember the slave master is a subtle beast and a liar the same way you hear saddam hussein has weapons of mass destruction gaddafi wanted to kill their people 
that's the same thing they did back then if you read these accounts you will understand what we're saying stop believing those lies it's not true remember they also claimed that the negro women did not value their children they just gave them away freely so they were not actually getting the slaves free as they were accused of that the negro women were just giving them away because the negroes were like animals so when you believe these lies always remember that it casts a bad light on the entire race because everyone would think whatever they were told about the people were the same that's why you see them through the Fulanese today you agitate for roads to be built they start killing people people would think that's how black people are without knowing that it is that group and it is the British hiding behind them. It's a very simple thing to see if you open your eyes. And going further, it says it is a proof of the absolute power of the destroyer over these tribes that he has been able to pervert the strongest feeling which God has implanted in the human breast, a mother's love for her helpless infants into hatred and loathing. So you see the same people that were killing the Negroes, capturing them as slaves, they now came back from the back door and now telling them that they were killing their twins. Our interest is for you to see how subtle the slave master is. At least if you read these accounts, you will understand what we're saying. And going further here, it says, Thenceforth, King Ayo made infanticide a capital crime, but he had power to do so only among his own people. In asking him on one occasion to provide shelter for a twin mother, the woman to whom she belonged, having pulled down the house in which the bath occurred, the king spoke of the custom as prevailing in the neighboring tribes. A small tribe beyond Ekrofyong killed both mother and children. The people of Akaba, another small tribe in our neighborhood, drive the poor mother into the bush and allow her to perish of want. The Kalaba people sometimes pick them up. The woman going to the side of the river to hail any canoe passing. Another tribe drives off both father and mother. Both the father is allowed to return to society on his paying a fine and catching a certain animal without wounding it. Now you see how smart they are playing. These same people told us that the Negroes had no laws. They were naked and lived on trees. But you see, when they were done with the slave trade, they came with this fraud of how they were killing their twins. We encourage you to find time to read these materials yourself. Rise above cognitive bias. Rise above the lies you were told as children. Understand that the slave master is a liar. A rational and kindly custom, a contrast to all this unnatural cruelty, prevails among the Ekoi people, a tribe at no great distance from us. When a twin birth occurs amongst them, they make it an occasion of rejoicing and her neighbors present gifts to the happy mother. The first case of the preservation of twin infants occurred at Old Town, then occupied by the Reverend Mr. Edgerly Sr. The birth took place in the mission premises, otherwise it would have been impossible to secure the safety of the children. Remember they have been securing others, they told us. But now, if not that this birth happened in the premises of their church, then it would have been impossible. So he goes on to say, Ibo was blown on the mission house, by which ceremony all intercourse with it was prohibited. The children were forbidden to attend school and the people to attend divine service, so that to use a term now current, the mission family was boycotted in every way. The chief of the town, known to Europeans as Willie Tom Robbins, an old man was devoted to all the hiddenish customs of the country. Though following the example of Duke and Creek towns, he had permitted the settlement of a mission station beside him and had gone so far in the way of improvement as they had done to prohibit the public market on Sabbath. Now, you see, at that time people were resisting their false religion their golden calf but you see how they turned everything around to say it was because women had twins and all that if you looked at Archibald's things fall apart you will see how that story is turned to the favor of the slave masters and then if we digress a little we see where it tells us in 1564 he embarked on another voyage in the Giza 
of 700 tons. Remember, this is a subtle way of using a different name for the slave ship Jesus and we will prove that to you shortly. And it goes further to say, with three small vessels and made straight for the African coast at Cape de Verde and Sierra Leone, the narrator of the voyage states that they fell in with a vessel which they supposed was carrying on a legitimate trade for the natives of the Cape avoided the snares set for them which led them to the inference that they had been forewarned by the vessel of the piratical designs of Hawkins and his crew. Remember Hawkins was the captain of the slave ship Jesus but our interest is for you to see how they spelt it here J-E-S-U-R because they probably and obviously didn't want to use Jesus so they turned the name around because the slave master is a liar and he has a lot of degrees in lying. So let us look at another material to show you what we're saying by that use of Jesus. And so let us reference Voyages of the Elizabethan Seamen to America, 13 narratives from the collection of Hercules, selected and edited with historical notices by E.J. Penn and Richard Hercules, and this was published 1893. And here we are told that the voyage by Master John Hawkins, Esquire, and afterward Knight, captain of the Jesus of Lubeck, that is the slave ship Jesus, one of Her Majesty's ships, and General of the Solomon, and the other two barks, going in his company to the coast of Guinea and the Indies of Nova Hispania, begun in Anno Domini 1564. You notice that the other account also gave us these same dates but tweaked the name to what they called Jizo. That's the only place we had seen it as Jizo. And the essence of doing that, if you have studied the slave master, is so that if anyone told you tomorrow or the people at that time that there was a slave ship called Jesus, they will run to books like that and tell you it's a lie. It's Jizo. It's not the same as Jesus. But you see where they got it from. It was actually Jesus. But you see how they carefully now changed the thing, tweaked it a bit, because they understand the implication if the people got to know that that's what they were doing. And so please don't get this wrong. You notice that he got the tonnage of the ship right at 700. And the other ship is and the Solomon, a ship of 140, the Tiger, a bark of 50, and the Swallow of 30 tons, being all well furnished with men to the number of 103 score and 10, as also with ordnance and victual requisite for such a voyage departed out of Plymouth the 18th day of October in the year of the Lord 1564 with a prosperous wind. Remember at that time when slave ships arrived successfully, the church bells will ring in Liverpool and in London to signify a successful slave capture. And then you are telling us it could have been the arrow. You see how smart the slave master plays. And so on this map, you see the Bight of Biafra, you see Ibibio, you see all the way to Afibo and Ibo, and they say it's the United Presbyterian Missionary Map of Old Calabar, and this is from the same book we were looking at earlier. Our interest is to show you what the slave master came there to do, and when you hear some people telling you today that Biafra was in Cameroon, all you need to do is to ask them about Ambazonia and ask them why they are not helping the Ambazonians fight for freedom as well. Is it not interesting that the Biafra they claim is outside Nigeria is also perhaps in Ambazonia where they are looking for freedom from the same group. It is the same slave hunters that you see in Cameroon that you see in Nigeria too. Both are one and the same. The same group, the Fulanese mainly and the Kanuris, they are both of the same race. And going further here, something of interest is where it says the supreme power over the whole country is Epe. The native name for a leopard, anglicized Ebo. This Ebo is represented to be a supernatural being inhabiting the forest and is brought into the town only on great occasions, concealed in a small tent, borne along to suit his progress, and ushered into a back apartment in the town Palava house. 